I, like you, suffer from procrastination, like many other people, suffering quotes. Uh, how do we avoid procrastination? I don't think the suffer is in quotes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a huge part of the problem, is that it's a, it's, it's treated like a silly problem. Yeah. Um, it, people don't take it seriously as a dire problem, um, but it can be. It can it can ruin your life. Um, it, it, there's uh, like talk we talked because we talked about the compiling com, uh, concept with you know if you read a little if you you know you mm -hmm. if you, okay if you write if you write two pages a week you write a book every two years you're a prolific writer right and the difference between you know the, again it's not that, that that person's working so hard it's that they have the ability to when they commit to something like on Sunday mornings I'm going to write two pages. That's it. They, they respect. They have. They have enough. They have. A, they respect the the part of them that made that decision is is a respected character in their brain, um, and they say, "Well, that's I decided it, so I'm going to do it." The procrastinator um, won't do those two pages. That's just exactly the kind of thing the procrastinator will keep on their list, and they will not do. But the it doesn't mean they're any less talented than the writer who does the two pages. It doesn't mean they want it any less. Maybe they want it even more. And it doesn't mean that they wouldn't be just as happy having done it uh, as the writer who does it. So what they're missing out on, picture a writer who writes 10 books, you know, bestsellers, and they go on these book tours and, you know, they, and, and they just are so gratified with their career and, you know, and they think about what the other person is missing who does none of that, right? So that that is a massive loss a massive loss and it's because um the internal mechanism in their brain uh, is not doing what the other person is so they don't have the respect for the, the the part of them that made the the choice they feel like it's someone they can disregard and so to me is this in the same boat as someone who uh uh is obese because their eating habits make them obese over time or their exercise habits um that you know, that's a huge loss for that person. That person is 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 you know the health problems, and and it's just probably making them miserable. Um, and it's and it's self inflicted, right? It's a, it's self defeating, but that that doesn't make it an easy problem to fix just because you're doing it to yourself. So to me, procrastination is another one of these where you are the only person in your own way. You are you know you are failing at something or not doing something that you really want to do. You know, it doesn't have to be work. Maybe you're you want to get out of that marriage. That you know, you, you realize you, you, it hits you, you, you shouldn't be in this marriage. You should get divorced. And you wait 20 extra years before you do it, or you don't do it at all. Um, that is, uh, you know, you're not living the life that you know you should be living, right? And so uh, I think it's fascinating. Now, the problem is it's also a funny problem because there's short-term procrastination, uh, which I talk about as, you know, the kind that has a deadline. Mm -hmm. Now, some people, you know... Uh, this is when I bring in the, the, there, there's different characters. There's the, the panic monster comes in the room yeah. and that's when you actually, you know, the, 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 the procrastinator can, um, there, there's different levels. There's the kind that even when there's, um, a deadline, they, they stop panicking. They just, they've given up and they, they, they really have a problem. Then there's the kind that when there's a deadline, they'll do it, but they'll wait to the last second. Mm -hmm. Both of those people, I think have a huge problem once there's no deadline. Because, and most of the important things in life, there's no deadline, which is, you know, changing your career, uh, you know, becoming a writer when you never have been before, getting out of your relationship, um, uh, you know, be doing whatever you need to, the changes you need to make in order to get into a relationship. There's a thing after one, launching a startup, launching a startup, right? Uh, or once you're, once you've launched a startup, firing is the right, someone that needs to be fired, right? Yes. I mean, going out for fundraising instead of just, instead of just trying to, you know, there's so many moments when the big change that you know you should be making that would completely change your life if you just did it uh, has no deadline. It just has to be coming from yourself. And um, I think that a ton of people have a problem where they will, they, they think this delusion that, you know, I'm going to do that. I'm definitely going to do that, you know, but not, not this week, not this month, not today, because whatever. And they make this excuse again and again, and it just sits there on their list collecting dust. Um, and so, yeah, to, to me, it's, uh, it is very real suffering. And the fix is in fixing the habits, just, uh, uh, like I'm still not working on the fix, first of all. So there, there's, okay. 
there is um there's it, it, just say you have a boat that sucks and it's leaking and it's gonna sink you can fix it with duct tape for a couple of, you know for a one ride or whatever mm-hmm. uh that's not really fixing the boat but you can get you by so there's duct tape solutions mm-hmm. to me so the panic monster is the character that rushes into the room once the deadline gets too close or once there's some scary external pressure not just from yourself. And that's a huge aid to a lot of procrastinators. Um, again, there's a lot of people who won't, you know, do that thing. They've been writing that book they wanted to write, but there's way fewer people who will not show up to the exam. Mm-hmm. You know, most people show up to the exam. So um, that's because the panic monster is going to freak out if they don't. So you can you can create a panic monster. If you want to, you know, you really want to write music, you really want to become a singer-songwriter, well, book a venue. Um Tell 40 people about it and say, hey, on, you know, this day, two months from now, come, come and see. I'm going to play you some of my songs. You now have a pandemonium. You're going to write songs. You're going to have yeah. to, right? So um, there's, there's, there, there's duct tape things. You know, you can do things. You know, people do. There's, I've done a lot of this with a friend. And I say, if I don't get X done by a week from now, I have to donate a lot of money mm-hmm. somewhere I don't want to donate. And that's, you would put that in the category of duct tape solutions. Yeah, because it, because it's not. Why do I need that, right? If if I yeah. really had solved this, this is something I want to do for me. It's selfish. This is, I just literally just want to be selfish here and do the work I need to do to get the goals I want to get, right? There, there, there's there's a much, all the incentives are, should be in the right place. And yet, if I don't say that, I will, it'll be a week from now and I won't have done it. Something weird is going on. There's some resistance. There's some force that is prevent, that is in my own way, right? And so doing something where I have to pay all this money, okay, now I'll panic and I'll do it. So that's duct tape. Mm-hmm. fixing the boat is something where I don't have to do that. I just will do the things that I, again, it, it's not, I'm not talking about super crazy work ethic, just like, for example, okay, I have a lot of examples because I have a serious problem that I've been working on. Um, and in some ways I've gotten really successful at, at solving it. And in other ways I'm still, still floundering. Um, so <laughs> yeah, the world's greatest duct taper. Yes. Well, I, I, I'm pretty good at duct taping. I probably could be even better. And I'm like, and I'm, and I'm. You're procrastinating on becoming a better duct taper. Either. Literally. <laughs> like, yes, I, there's nothing. I won't. Um, so here's what I know what I, I should do as a writer, right? It's very obvious to me is that I should wake up. I don't have to be crazy. I don't know, 6 a.m. or anything insane, or I'm not going to be one of those crazy people, 530 jogs. I'm going to wake up at whatever, you know, 730, 8, 830. And I should have a, a block, like just say nine to noon. Mm-hmm. where I get up and I just really quick make some coffee and, and write. Yeah, it's obvious because all the great writers in history did exactly that. Some some of, of them have done that. that that's common. There are, there's some that I like these writers. They do the late night sessions, but most yeah. of them, they do but wake there's up. There's a again. session, but there's a session that's- Most that's writers lot- write in the morning and there's a reason. I, I, I don't think I'm different than those people. Um, It's a great time to write. You're fresh, right? Your ideas from the- the from dreaming have kind of collected you have all you know new new answers that you didn't have yesterday and you can just go but more importantly if i just had a routine where i wrote from noon nine to noon weekdays every week would have a minimum of 15 focused hours of writing which doesn't sound like a lot but it's a lot a 15 15 no this is no joke this is you know you're not your phone's away you're not talking to anyone you're not opening your email you are focused writing for three hours five that's a big week for most writers, right? Yes. So now what's happening is that every weekday is a minimum of a B, I'll give myself. You know, an A might be, you know, I, wow, I really just got into a flow and wrote for six hours and had, you know, great. But it's a minimum of a B. I can keep going if I want. And every week is a minimum of a B with those 15 hours, right? And if I just had to talk about compiling, if I, this is the two pages a week. If I just did that every week, I'd achieve all my writing goals in my life. And yet I wake up and most days I just... Uh, either I'll pr- revenge procrastination late at night and go to bed way too late and then wake up later and get on a bad schedule and I just fall into these bad schedules. Or I'll wake up and there's just, you know, I'll, I'll say I'm just going to do a few emails and I'll open it up and I'm yeah. suddenly on text and I'm texting. and I, Or I'll just go and, you know, I'll make a phone call and I'll be on phone calls for three hours. Yeah. It, it's always something. Yeah, yeah. Or I'll start writing and then I hit a little bit of a wall. But because there's no sacred, this is a sacred writing block, I'll just hit the wall and say, well, this is icky and I'll go do something else. Yeah. So duct tape, what I've done is... Um, uh, there, White But Why has one employee, Alicia. She's the manager of lots of things. That's her role. Um, she truly does lots of things. Um, and one of the things we started doing <laughs> yeah. is either she comes over and sits next to me where she can see my screen from nine to noon, 
That's all it takes. The thing about procrastination is, is usually they're not kicking and screaming, I don't want to do this. It's the feeling of, you know, in the old days when you had to go to class, you know, your lunch block is over and it's like, oh, shit, I have class in five minutes. Or it's Monday morning, you go, oh, yeah. But you said, you know what? But you know, you go. You say, okay. And then you get to class and it's not that bad once you're there, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. It, it, uh, you know, you have a trainer and he says, okay, next set. And you go, oh, okay. And you do yeah. it. That's all it is. It's someone, some external thing being like, okay, I have to do this. And then you have that moment of like, oh, this sucks, but I guess I'll do it. If no one's there though, the problem with the procrastinator is they don't have that in person in, in their head. Yeah. Other people, I think, were raised with a sense of shame if they don't do stuff. And that stick in their head is hugely helpful. I don't really have that. Um, and so, Anyway, Alicia is sitting there next to me. It's not, she's, she's doing her own work, but she can see my screen. And she, of all people, knows exactly what I should be doing, what yeah. I shouldn't be doing. That's all it takes. The shame of just having her see me while she's sitting there not working would just be too, it's too weird and too embarrassing. So I get it done. And it's amazing. It's like game changer for me. So duct tape can solve. Sometimes duct tape is enough. But I'm curious to, I'm still trying to, what is going on? Yeah. I, I think part of it is that, we are actually wired. I think I'm being I'm being very sane. Human actually is what's happening. Or not sane is not the right word. I'm being like, I'm being a natural human that we are not programmed to sit there and do homework of a certain kind that we get the results like six months later. Like that is not, so we're supposed to, cons you know, conserve energy and like fulfill our needs as we need them and like do immediate things. And um, we're overriding our natural ways when we wake up and get to it. And I think sometimes it's because the, the pain, I think a lot of times we're just avoiding suffering. And a lot of, for a lot of people, the pain of not doing it is actually worse because they feel shame. So if they don't get up and take a jog and get up early and get to work, I'll feel like a bad person. And that is worse than doing those things. And then it becomes a habit eventually. And it becomes just easy, automatic. It just becomes, I do it because that's what I do.